AFTV, Mo, listen, it's been, it's not been an easy season. Now we've got one point against Sheffield at home. So what do you make of that? You know, like uh, how bad the season is kind of creeps up on you. We're kind of used to it right in the midst of it as fans. We live it, so it kind of creeps up on you. But certain things just bring it into focus. And when I look at this, Arsenal are playing a promoted team. They've beaten us at their place. They've come here and they've taken a draw and they're ahead of us in the league. And I think, wow, when you just take that and just put that under the microscope, I just can't believe how badly this season is going. But on the other hand, I think to myself, look, in any season where you're on your third manager, of course it's not going to be easy, it's going to be turbulent. And on that basis, I just say to myself, look, this season is a complete write-off. There's not many, not been many seasons in our, in our last couple of decades where we've had three managers. You know, we're talking about uh, the one where Bruce Rioch was, uh, was there and then Stuart Houston and that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, so... So the thing is, it's unprecedented times for us a little bit. And if it was hard for Emery to take over after Wenger, it's going to be even harder for the man that takes over after Wenger, after uh, Emery, after Ljungberg. Do you know what I mean? So it is going to take a hell of a lot of time. And Arteta, I feel like he's very demanding for the players. And we have seen a bit of an uplift since he's come in. I'm not going to dispute that. But what we're not seeing is the results. Yeah. And today was the exception. There was no increased performance today. I thought we were very, very poor. Uh, but my frustration is that we're now at the stage of the season where every single weekend we're slipping further and further away from even trying to salvage anything from the season. And what's dangerous about it is that if we're not getting these results, that's it. It will literally be out of sight and it will be hugely embarrassing. We'll look back on this on this league table in like 10, 20 years time and we'll be like, what the hell happened there? How did Sheffield United finish above Arsenal? How did X team finish above yeah. Arsenal? And it's not going to make any sense. But I just hope that if it does happen, it's a one-off blip. And, and when I'm going to judge Arteta, it's going to be from next year. Because we all said about Emery, we'll give him a season, we'll give him a season, we'll give him a season. We all were very understanding after 20 years of Arsenal Wenger, it's only fair to let him have some time. But now I feel like people are starting to get a little bit critical of Arteta yeah. already. No, and I'm thinking, hold on a second, it's only been five games, right? And I get three draws, uh, one win, one defeat is very, very poor returning those five games. It's better than but, five losses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, if it was hard for Emery, yeah. as I said before, it's harder for Arteta, given who he's following and who he's following and who he's following. So we have to give him a bit more time. Don't you think it's too soon to write off, though? I mean, it's, still, it's still January. Transfer window yeah. still yeah, open. Yeah, yeah. There's still things what, that could be done. I 100% agree with you on that basis. So it's still January. A lot of stuff can happen. But the reason why I'm writing it off, personally, is because... We're always saying that, oh, if we had won the today, we'd only be X points behind X. And, and it's always hypothetical. Yeah. We're not delivering anything. It's always hy hypothetical. So my prop, if we had won today, for example, but all the other teams had won around us as well, yeah. at least I can look at what we're doing and say there's some reason to be hopeful. But we're not giving us any reason to, to be hopeful. And the one thing I'm seeing as well, second halves under Arteta, and I'm not blaming him, but I think it's because he demands so much of his team, yeah. we haven't got the fitness for it. We, we just can't seem to keep up. And, and not this game. I, think, I don't think this is a story of this game, but generally what I'm seeing of him, until the fitness levels are back up and until he's got the team doing exactly what they want, because look at us playing out the back today. Mm. Shocking. Leno's distribution today. Oh, Shocking. Man. You know, it's like we've learned nothing. It's going to take him time for to, to embed his ideas. When that happens, and maybe, but right now, I I'm going to be realistic and say the season is a write-off in the league anyway, yeah. because um, because yeah, we're not delivering. We're on not doing off, our job. On the off chance we win on Tuesday, is it still written yeah. off? Look, you know, uh, someone said it earlier, and I, and I fully agree with it. The games against the big teams, you actually never know what's going to happen because the players naturally get up for those. Yeah. It is these games. It's the, it's the boring games that, you know, there's a few tickets available for. It's those games that um, really separate the, the winners from, from the also-rans. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't be surprised if we played Chelsea and all of a sudden we're playing out of our skin and, and we, we get a result there. I'm not expecting it. I'm just going I wouldn't be surprised. What surprises me is when we're playing uh, bottom half of the league table. I, I can't even say that because we're yeah, yeah, because almost we're one of them. Yeah. Them. <laughs> but you know, I, I'm talking about the teams that aren't classed as the big clubs. When we're yeah. playing them and we come out all guns blazing, seal the game off in 30 minutes and do a professional job, get two or three goals on the board. That's what surprises me. Not when Arsenal pull it out of the bag against a bigger team. But, you know, fingers crossed. Yeah.